Hey folks, welcome back. So the Insta360 go to hit the market I'm a little behind. I've been really putting this thing through its paces, trying to see how it compares to the original, uh, also compared to a GoPro and what, you know, there's lots of options out there and I just wanted to see how this thing stacks up. I want to make sure I have the right opinion of this little guy before I start talking to you folks. So this video is going to have some spliced in footage from a live stream where I unboxed this camera. If you're interested in the live streams, I live stream, uh, either Saturday or Sunday. So it just depends on when I get time to live stream, but it's usually every weekend. Uh, make sure you hit the subscribe button, the bell for the notifications, and uh, I hope to see you there. So here we go. All right, so I have had the Insta360 Go for a very long time, uh, pre-ordered it before they came out, and I've been a huge fan of this thing. It's been super useful. The best camera you got is the one that's on your pocket, and this thing's been tiny. It's been very reliable. I've had to replace it once, um, which, the, uh, the, re the replacement plan through uh, Insta360 kind of sucked. It was a pain in the butt. If you can get this through Best Buy, I'd recommend doing that. Uh, what I did with the Insta360 GO 2 is I did not purchase their replacement insurance. I am gonna use Square Trade. They don't care what it is or how much it was, they'll insure it. And uh, you don't have to purchase the item through them to get the insurance. So it's just, I think it has to be like less than 30 days old. So I'm gonna do it through them. Uh, so the, the original Insta360 came with this really cool carrying case, all these little magnetic mounts. Um, really, really nice camera. The charging case was a very novel idea. Some of the things I didn't like about it is this thing will kill itself sitting in this case, constantly charging itself. So the little pogo pins, you have to kind of put it in there sideways or the other way around so it doesn't just kill itself. Um, and this is the only indication you have this recording what the buttons do and the the haptic feedback was really kind of hard to tell whether you were actually going to record what it is you were trying to do or if you're going to lose your footage you know it's for a v1 product that's not terrible uh that's the best we had at the time let's go ahead and put this away but i do really like the the little carrying case it came with so the insta360 go 2 uh comes in a pretty nice little package and folks i don't know how you feel about the presentation of the packaging. If I could save five bucks and they throw this thing in a paper bag, I would. I don't care about all this this crap, all the waste that's in here. It's nice, but who really cares? Do you care? I I'm curious. I don't. I absolutely don't. If I could save a buck, I'd do it that way. Like So we have the camera here. It's just kind of stuck there on the box because it uses magnets. Everyone loves magnets. Um, it has a little pendant uh, pendant deal, kind of like the original Insta360 Go did. Um, I'm sure I'm destroying the box. Not the way they intended me to. But So this little pendant was intended to be worn under your clothing, so you can kind of wear it as like a chest cam. Pretty cool looking, uh, or not cool looking, but a cool idea. Very easy to use. Uh, but for us in this hobby, probably not what we're too concerned about. Quick start guide, who cares? Blah, blah, blah. And in the box, we have... Um, a USB-C to, to USB-A uh, cable. We have some lunch for later. The 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 ball cap mount. Uh, the original Insta360 Go had one of these as well. This one is kind of the same idea, but it's a much better design because it has uh, a way to set the angle on it, so you weren't having to like shim it up to make it look in the direction you wanted. Uh, pretty cool little setup. Again, just magnets right in there. Also has a little stick mount. This thing's pretty cool. I uh, uh, it sticks to everything really well, and when it gets dirty, you just kind of you just kind of wash it. And Bob's your uncle. It's back up and running again. Lots of magnets. I swear the magnets, the amount of magnets on this thing is probably half the reason why it is the cost that it is. Which we'll talk about that here in a minute. Uh, and we have the charging case, which this is. This is one of the big improvements over the original version. One of the things I really like about the new uh, Insta360 Go 2 is this charging case. Just like the old one, you drop it in, starts charging itself, but they've changed how you interact with the camera. This is a wireless remote for the camera. So no longer are you just guessing on what recording modes you have and how you're doing it. Um, it is all, right here on the display. Look at, I'm recording 1440p, 30 frames a second. 
or I'm doing uh, photos, pro video, which is kind of like a, a Pro Tunes type thing. Uh, time shift, so it's like a time lapse and, or a hyperlapse, time lapse, HDR video, slow motion at 120 frames a second, and you can change all these things within the menus. Uh, this is, this here is probably the, the biggest improvement uh, of this camera. Uh, another neat little feature, uh, other than the fact it's all USB-C now, is uh, you got yourself a little tripod. Pretty darn cool. And the remote works regardless of if you have it in the cradle or not. So it's connecting, and boom, shooting video just like that. This is this is awesome. This is the, the recording and not knowing what you're doing, or, or just by the, the 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 haptic feedback and the lights was the biggest pain in the butt of the original Insta 360 Go. This makes it way 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 more useful in my my opinion. And there, I'm gonna just stop the recording. And uh, we want to recharge our camera, drop it back in the, the cradle, close her up, and we're good to go. The case size is about the same as the original. Um, so that right there is, in my opinion, the reason why this thing will go away. Uh, I don't know if they plan to keep making the original Insta360 go, but I, I would definitely get the two over the one if I had the choice. Couple of the downsides though, here we go. Some of the differences between the one and the two is obviously size. Uh, let's see if I can level these out a little bit. The one's a little taller. The one's significantly fatter. And uh, the width is just about the same. Uh, weight is another consideration, obviously, if we're gonna be strapping these two uh, FPV flying buzz saws, we gotta know what they weigh. And the Insta360 Go 1, everyone knows, is about 18 and a half grams. The 2, on the other hand, is 26 and a half grams. So uh, it is a little bit more, uh, significantly more, depending on what you're attaching to. If you're, if you're smacking it on a, a V1 or a, a 1S quad, that's an awful lot of extra weight to carry around. But if you're putting on a 3-inch or a tiny trainer or something like that, you're not going to notice the difference. Uh, but in the case, we're clocking uh, about 90 grams, 90 grams in the case. But these are essentially not available. You can find used ones or refurbished ones, but new ones like this that haven't been refurbed are uh, are hard to find. And this sucker is uh, 72 grams. That is an awful lot of weight, but the video quality is pretty darn good out of it. So the other option you have is something like this, a naked GoPro. This is a Hero 6. So without the power lead, which you do need to, to power this thing, we're talking uh, 27 and a half grams. So the difference between that and that is one gram. So this is one gram heavier. The video quality is gonna be sub significantly better, but to get that awesome flow state stabilization that you want for doing like a cinematic video or even like a, a nice acro rip, uh, you're gonna have to do some more work. Like just taking the video straight out of the GoPro isn't really all that great. You're most likely gonna run it through uh, Real Steady Go, which is another additional purchase. And it takes a long time to render that on really good hardware, really good PC hardware. And on a crap computer, it's gonna take, it's gonna take you some time. So the flow state stuff is is hard coded into the camera. While you're viewing it in the app, you can turn it on, turn it off, turn on uh, FPV stabilization, turn on horizon lock. It's done real time. Um, that's what I really like about the Insta360 Go is it's just it's just there. It just works. Um, and another thing about the the version two that's uh, a big plus over the V1 is this. Look at that. We have replacement lenses this time. Uh, with the V1, you crash and crack the lens, you're hooped. Like there's just no, there's no fixing. I've seen people try to polish it with like glass polish and things like that. And it's never really the same. 
and also they're making ND filters for this little guy too. So that that is a really tough sell for the V1. All right, so the go-to's 300 buckaroonies. Do they even sell the V1? Oh yeah, $200. So for an extra 100 bucks, you're getting a substantially better camera in just about every way except for the weight department. Is it worth it to you? Ah, uh, hard to say. You're gonna have to ask yourself that one. If you're going for the lightest possible rig, then the V1 is the way to go, but the video quality is is uh, much, much less, uh, much lower quality. Uh, oh, that's right, I was gonna show this. So um, something we ordered came with oh, some dry ice. So I was doing some little science, sciencey stuff for my daughter and uh, <laughs> nothing says science like blowing shit up. This is in slow-mo mode. That was fun. Uh, the camera quality is very good. I, I'm, I'm very happy with it. Uh, just doing some, uh, just did some one wheeling down the road with, with uh, me and the wife and the kid. They're on their bicycles. And uh, just getting some footage using the, you know, the, the Insta360 Go or the Insta360 uh, selfie stick. I've never owned a selfie stick before. This thing is skookum as frig. Probably break some knees with it. Uh, that was, hey, the video quality is really good. I, couple things I wish they do differently on the V2 as I, I wish the OLED screen on the, the little um, camera holder the the sorry the the charging bat the charging cradle was bigger and I wish that they made a way so you could put the camera in backwards and have it coming out this side so you could selfie stick into the, the camera case like this and have the camera pointing yeah instead of only yeah little things but uh it's one of those things that i would like to see a change to otherwise and that's the other thing is insta360 they are ta they are catering to us the fpv enthusiast is gopro hell they remove protune they're they're crippling their cameras they don't make the session anymore even though we all want one but we were abusing it because of best buy well, that, that's a whole other thing but Obviously, GoPro doesn't care about FPV drones. They don't. They absolutely don't. If they did, they wouldn't have removed Protune. I, I don't know if they have a good reason for removing Protune, but I can't see why you would take a feature that at least some subset of the consumers are, are using and get rid of it. But, well, here we are. Insta360 Go, or Insta360 is catering to us. They have FPV mode. Clearly, that's for us. It has our name in it, FPV. Right? Or am I wrong? Let me know. Let's see. Back to the chat. Uh, it starts. How much does the does it weigh in the case? Uh, good question. Let's pop this bad boy in there. All right. So I've seen a lot of video comparisons between the V1 and the V2. Well, I want to take it a step further. How about V1, V2, and, well, obviously, the elephant in the room, the, content, the one that everyone has to contend with, the GoPro Hero Session 5. How is this going to stack up compared to the other two? Three or more. What other cameras would you compare this to? Please put it in the video description below. Would it be just the Session and the V1? How about a naked GoPro? How about a naked? How about a GoPro Eight? Naked GoPro Six? Uh, what what other comparisons would you like to see this camera compared to? Let me know. Put in the video description, and I'll see if I can get around to doing it. So, anyways, here we go. Let's roll the footage from this comparison contraption monstrosity thing. All right. So I have four cameras here. One of them is the Insta360 Go V1. 
Insta360 Go V2, GoPro Hero Session 5, and the DJI Digital FEV DVR recording. All the Insta360 Go cameras are set with stabilization turned off. Same thing with the Hero Session 5. And uh, I'll just watch this for a little bit. I'll go ahead and just make the audio happen on each one of these. We're only gonna visit that once. I don't know if it's that I like the session better than the Insta360 Go V2 or, or if it's just I'm used to the, uh, the GoPro session sound. But uh, the V2 isn't bad. The V1's kind of just buffled and muddy, but they're all pretty now. Uh, why would you listen to them? You know. So again, this is all with stabilization turned off. The Insta360 Go V1 uh, starts to lag behind for some reason. It, it, it is at a lower frame rate, as you can probably clearly tell. It's a 60 frame per second timeline, and uh, the other three cameras are at 60 frame per second. So the V1 drops out right there. I must have had the, the time limit set wrong. So let's go ahead and just evaluate the two that we're really concerned with right now. On the left, we have the Insta360 Go V2, and on the right, the GoPro Hero Session 5. Uh, again, this is the go-to with stabilization turned off, or flow state stabilization. That's what they call it. This is with automatic colors. I think it looks really good. There is a flat color profile for if you want to do color grading in, the, in post. And here we have the session five. Again, this is the GoPro color and everything's set to automatic. No ND filters on either one of these cameras. Back to the Go 2. And the really nice thing about the Insta360 Go is you can turn stabilization on in post. It's not something you have to do before you record, you just go out and hit record and you can do all the changes in post, which is something you certainly can't do with the GoPros. And this was the same on the V1 version of the Insta360 Go. You can even pop it into like a one by one for certain social media platforms or 19 by six for like Instagram. And again, it's all done in post. No need to worry about it before you make the recording. So I'm just gonna let this play out. You guys be the judge, see what you think. How does this compare to the, uh, the gold standard of the GoPro Hero Session 5?
So another big question, and it's something I really liked about the first Insta360 Go is flying them on a whoop. This is a little 65 millimeter 1S whoop. And uh, it's, it's a newbie drone product and they made a little strap thing that would hold the first Insta360 Go. Well, I made one for the V2. And boom, just like that, you have a 65 millimeter whoop that can haul around an HD camera that has unquestionably incredible stabilization and image quality. This was set up with the, uh, the linear video format. And again, it's all done in post. It really gives the video that, um, that real steady go look where you have the locked horizon. Um, it's a pretty desirable look on a lot of videos. And of course, my <laughs> I didn't realize that it was starting to rain as soon as I did this, so I got one clip uh, loop through the backyard and head on back in. So you gotta ask yourself, is this thing worth purchasing? I have to say absolutely yes. This is an incredible camera. They really did a lot of things right. All the things that were annoying and irritating about the V1, they have fixed in the V2. The charging case is another great addition. There's a ton of extra things that you can do with this thing that I didn't even get close to in the video. They do have ND filters coming out for it, so that is something to look forward to. Try to smooth out that video, give it more of a like a buttery cinematic feel rather than that like jaggedy uh, high frame rate look that it has to it, uh, which is kind of what people have been doing with these guys forever, putting a ND filter on there and dropping the frame rate. Um, but you gotta, I mean, you saw the video. How do these two compare? What do you think? Do you do you like this over this or do you, does it really matter to you? Um, these things don't exist anymore. They're not being produced. I can find them anywhere from $75 to $300. It all kind of depends on what's available at the time and what you can find. Um, this you can get now and, and again and again, and uh, you can get insurance for it. So if you do happen to smash it, you can get it replaced. Uh, it is water resistant. Um, it does seem to take a pretty decent beating. Insta360 Go cares about us, the FPV community, and I don't know. I think, I think this is a a great camera, especially if you're trying to fly around in tight places, like with a whoop or a three inch or something light that is um, that's weight restricted. This is going to be your go-to camera. These are in every way better than like the split style cameras which are committed to each quad you know you can take this and move it from quad to quad um, you just gotta be careful which mounts you use you try not to induce jello all the standard camera trickery that we've been dealing with for years with uh, with high def cameras all right folks well let me know what you think put it down in the comments do you like this are you gonna pick one up and if you are gonna pick one up click the link in the video description i have an affiliate account with insta360 every time someone clicks that link and purchases anything from that site I get a small portion back to me that I put right back into the channel, which eventually comes to you in one way, shape, or form. And if you really wanna help me out, head over to tweetfb.com, check out that Patreon link. I do monthly giveaways. Gonna to wanna to see the one I got coming up next month. And all my other affiliated vendors are down there. All right, folks, thanks for coming out here. Thanks for looking at this. Sorry this is a long video, but there is a ton of material to cover, and I have uh, definitely not covered everything that this thing has going on with it. So like, subscribe, all that YouTuber stuff, and I will see you 
next time. And in whatever you do, get out and go fly. And I will see you next time. Bye.